In this video, I'll be showing you how we replace the owner side black water holding tank on our Lagoon 420 SV Voyager after the unpleasant discovery that we had a leaking storage system while bringing our new boat home from Florida to our home waters here on the Chesapeake, this became our first project priority. I'll show you what occurred, how we improved the system with valuable advice from other Lagoon owners, and tackle the issue of metric parts mixed with Imperial parts available here in the US. Okay, here's the offending Blackwater holding tank that came out of the owner's side of the boat. It's got a trapezoid shape, I guess. Uh, when we discovered the obvious, which was the smell we were dealing with and the presence of fluid on the shelf underneath this tank and running down into the bilge, we knew we had something wrong. Didn't know if it was a hose or whatever until we actually got this thing disassembled. So we got the tank out. And take a look at what we found. The tank is actually cracked all the way across here and up to here. So this this tank wasn't holding anything. The sewage was just going straight through. So this started the odyssey um, of this project in getting into these connectors that you see here. Uh, it's really the point of the video, uh, but this is the, the, the storage tank. Um, we bought a new one through the Lagoon Parts Beneteau folks, and um, the rest of the video is really kind of outlining what we discovered about the connectors and mixing metric with imperial sizes, and how we got this thing put together with a little owner modification I learned about from the Lagoon community that really helps with uh, with the smell. So anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so let's dig into the components of the system and talk a little bit about them and why I use them. Uh, as I've mentioned, one of the challenges of this project is that the outlet on the bottom of the tank, the drain, is a two inch NPS, National Pipe Straight, fitting. Most of the PVC connectors and adapters and so forth that you find here in the states are tapered connectors and you really shouldn't put a tapered connector into a straight connector the threads don't line up exactly right some people will wrap them with a lot of uh, Teflon tape and kind of just crank them down but really that's not what they're designed to do a straight taper is designed to be sealed with a gasket um, a tapered thread relies on friction and uses something like Teflon or pipe dope to maintain the seal. So let's talk about the components that are in the system and, and why I'm using them. So this part goes into the bottom of the tank. So again, this is the NPS National Pipe Straight threading. Um, this piece was not included with the tank, so that actually is what kind of led me down the road of figuring out this, this issue with the tapered and the straight threads. Uh, and I ended up ordering this piece from the Lagoon Parts Department because I just didn't, I couldn't get it two inch straight conveniently here. Um, I didn't want to force a tapered in there. I just wanted the part that worked right. Uh, I, a lot of places will advise that you seal it with 5200 if you want a permanent connection or 4200 if you want a semi-permanent connection. So if I ever need to pull this out, I've decided I want to be able to remove this. So I'm going to use the 4200. So you know, a, a nice bead of 4200 will go around this. I am using this gasket just for extra security and this will screw into the bottom of the tank. So there's a male barb fitting here. Now we're getting into the tapered parts. These are the parts I bought at the hardware store and online. So I'm using two inch hose and two inch fittings. And I'm gonna just crank them down here with the hose clamps. Um, I've tested all this in the house, it worked great. Um, so here we have uh, the two inch tapered to a female two inch taper on both sides with a chrome molly ball valve. This is a bit of an upgrade over what you find at the hardware store. Uh, it operates a little bit better and I think it'll be more durable. So we have another two inch male barb fitting here that we'll use Teflon tape on and then the balance of the hose that'll get down to where we cut into the existing 60 millimeter hose that was on the boat. Uh, there's a Vetus 
connection, adapter connection piece here that allows you to go from a 60 millimeter hose to a 50 millimeter hose. Now two inches is 52, so it's a little looser than this. Fits very snugly on the 60 millimeter side, a little loose. Lagoon told me that you can use a bicycle inner tube to take up a bit of that space, but when I did that up here, I just cranked down on these hose clamps and I didn't experience uh, any drips or anything. It seemed to work fine. So I'm just going to go ahead and go with that. So again, here's kind of the way this thing went together. This is a lagoon part with straight threads that match the threads that are in the holding tank. Two inch hose to a US Schedule 80 PVC hose bar. They're butted together here so this hose really isn't doing anything but holding them in place. Uh, this is an upgraded valve with a chrome molly ball valve on the inside. This will be a tapered 2 inch also that will seal with Teflon tape. Then we'll have the 50 to 60 millimeter adapter that will be hose clamped into the existing part of the plumbing and the through hole that, that we're not replacing at this time. So you'll see that when we do the install. Okay, so just another couple of points. This entire area where you see the stains, that staining was caused by the sewage that was sitting on this shelf. So I went over this entire shelf with penetrating epoxy, uh, let it so soak in with multiple coats there on the part where the hole is cut. Um, so that did a couple of things that sealed the smell in, and it also um, restored a little bit of the, the, uh, the strength to the board where it's all chewed up here on the edges. I gotta say, um, it smells better. Once this epoxy cured, uh, there's definitely a reduction of odor, even though this has been bleached and sanded and, and everything. So now we're going to go ahead and put the tank in. Okay, so we've had the tank installed for about a month now. We've done pump outs. Uh, it's gotten a lot of use, and I'm happy to report it's working perfectly. So why don't I take you down and we will review what we did. I saved you all the gory details of cutting it out and reinstalling and all the, you know, that sort of detail. I just wanted to provide highlights about, you know, how we did this and the parts we used and so forth. But it was pretty difficult getting the tank out. I had to cut some hoses. Um, going in was a little easier, but, you know. Got scraped up a little bit doing it, but um, otherwise, no worse for wear. So, let's take a look here. We'll start at the top. Uh, that's new two inch hose that goes to the pump out. Um, cut that bit off of the, the bigger piece I bought for the whole project. Here's the new tank. You can actually see it's filled to about this level. So we gotta do a pump out now. Like I said, we've done a few already, no leaks. Um, it's performing really well. Um, as I showed you, we've refinished this. A couple of tips about taking this out. All of these retainers, I don't know if every lagoon's got these or not, but there's one at the top, there's one here, there's one here, there's one here. Those have all got to come out to even, for this thing to even start to move. Um, and then, of course, the strap comes off, and I had to cut that pump out hose. To, to get the thing out. I obviously I cut the bottom out too. Um, put it back in was sort of a reverse installation. Um, I uh, pressed it up into the pump out fitting, secured the tank, screwed the fitting I, I showed you earlier in the video into the bottom and, um, and was able to kind of put it all back together. So here's how it looks below. It's basically the piece I showed you in the video. Um, this prevents the waste from going down into this pipe so there's no permutation happening and creating smell and, and I can tell you that there is no smell um, with this system so far so kind of securing the hose using using this valve up here in addition to the through hole in the in the bottom of the bilge really seems to work or at least so far so um, that's the assembly I showed you here's the connector piece that I mentioned where we're going from the 2 inch hose to the 60 millimeter hose. Again, it's just clamped. There's, there's no leakage at all. It's working great. Um, so this was the existing hose that was in the boat. I just cut it right there. I didn't want to fuss with it. You know, Later, 
um, when we do a, a, a refit or something I may make it two inch all the way to a two inch through hole but right now what we've got is just the the standard factory through hole so that's it that's the completed project so for anybody who's needing to tackle that project I hope hope this helps you know I highlighted some of the challenges and the issues that I ran into here in the states with the metric sizes that are on the tanks and the and the lagoon parts and you know what's available here in the states as far as imperial sizes and that that really was the crux of the of the project um, so if you're going to tackle this good luck uh, feel free to comment if you'd like um, and I'd be happy to share any more information about the project if that's helpful to you thanks <laughs>